Dr. David McKenzie has returned from New Orleans, the Big Easy, where he attended a conference filled with preeminent authorities on sexuality and sexual education. Human arousal and desire were on the agenda, I bet. It is my pleasure to welcome our resident couples counselor and sex therapist, Dr. David McKenzie, back to Studio 4 to tell us more. New Orleans, the Big Easy, what a town. Well, I tried to get an accent before I came back, but I just couldn't do it. <laughs> well, I have that accent, but we'll <laughs> do, do it later. You're a Southern Belle, are you? I, I, I know many people from New Orleans. <laughs> well, that was my first time. But I'm not really the, good at it, no. <laughs> but I'm practicing. That was our first time in the Deep South, and it was really a good experience. Oh, I know. Yeah. It's one of my favorite cities, and I'm sure the Katrina uh, tragedy has had a big impact, but it's coming back. It's coming back, and then they're sending the message out that New Orleans is open for business and um, they've got only half the number of tourists there mm -hmm. they had before Katrina, but it is building, so yes. the, the inner core was fairly untouched. And, uh, and I suspect you were in the French Quarter at the Sonnet House or something, sipping a mint julep. Uh, well, not, well we, we were into the French Quarter. It's a great place, mm -hmm. but we were on the edge of the oh. Sheraton. Okay. And uh, it was a great experience. So when leading edge researchers in sexuality yeah. get together in one room, yeah. What do they talk about? What are the topics on the table? Well, the American, the American Association of Sexuality Educators, Counselors and Therapists deals with a wide variety of, of uh, sexuality. So they're addressing sex educators, sex counselors, sex therapists, and some of the latest research on desire, on couples, on what makes for a happy marriage. All of this latest research comes out. And um, Dr. Stella Resnick uh, is a marvelous uh, uh, researcher and therapist in New York, mm. and she attaches uh, attachment theory with sexuality and coupling, and it's really a, an interesting talk that she gives. Any discussion of how the bees work? Uh, <laughs> Helen and Mark were saying, you know, they're they're very much about scent. <laughs> pheromones yeah. and that's a big part of attraction yes and in humans too right well n yes and no uh, humans uh, still have the capacity to produce pheromones that's left over from our evolution but about 23 million years ago when um, uh, human evolution uh, uh, primates began to notice color uh, the use of pheromones became less important. So they would see the red rear end of a, an orangutan. They knew that she was open for mating. Right. Um, so in our olfactory bulb uh, that takes in smells and odors, and pheromones are, are odorless, uh, we do not have that capacity as a primate. So there's a lot of controversy around human pheromones. There is some suspicion, strong suspicion, that even though we may not have the receptor for it, uh, it's still influencing us at some level. But if a human doesn't smell all that good, it is a bit of a turnoff, I must say. You know, the scent of a woman, uh, if you smell yeah. like Hermes or yeah. some beautiful perfume, yeah. uh, there yeah. must be something to it. Oh, yeah, because that's odor. Pheromones are odorless. And okay. uh, so, yeah, certain odors are very seductive and attractive, no mm -hmm. doubt about that. Now, I was reading... Uh, that's one of our primary uh, senses, you know, is smell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, smell can take you right back to four years of age. Well, and it, it's a smell of how someone's, when they perspire. Mm -hmm. Yes, they did research actually on um, swe uh, uh, sweaty t-shirts. And they mm -hmm. found that women who uh, would smell a shirt, even though there may not even be an odor to it, would right. say, that's the shirt, that's the man who wears that shirt that I want. And they would find a significant, highly significant mm -hmm. number of those men have the proper uh, width of shoulders and hip weight ratio. Really? Yeah. Wow. Well, when you leave someone and they leave a shirt behind, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You're always looking for ways. Always looking open. for ways. <laughs> or, or, you know, and you yeah. smell their, their shirt and you think, oh, that smells like him. That reminds mm. me of him. It's yeah. so him. And it's not necessarily the cologne. There's a, it's a scent. Oh, it's, it's a body, body it's odor. It's very primal. But they, but they even, uh, uh, these, some of these women even would smell T-shirts and would not smell anything. Wouldn't smell sweat. Wouldn't smell anything. And yet they were drawn to that T-shirt. Mm. And um, what they have found also is that uh, face symmetry, uh, the, 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 be the, uh, the better the face symmetry you have, or each side roughly is getting closer to right. looking like the other, uh, men will have a greater number of sex partners. Sure. And women really? will be more attracted to a symmetrical face. What do you think goes on when somebody meets you and 10 minutes later wants to marry you? What's that about? It doesn't happen often. I ran into a friend who said it happened to her. Yeah. She was in a canoe. <laughs> 
<laughs> and she she knew him for 10 minutes and he wanted to marry her and he did. Are they still together? Yes. Okay, yeah. Well, those things happen. There are various variables. Um, it's hard to know what that's all about. Right. Um, instant attraction, yeah, instant oh, yeah. desire. Oh, there's no, when I first met my wife, I was instantly attracted to her. Uh, she wasn't instantly attracted to me. She liked my eyes. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, uh, sh uh, there's something that's going on there and it was more to do with the face and everything. So I physical, think. mental. Yeah, just the whole package. You see, um, um, attractiveness, whether it be body shape, uh, hip weight ratio for women has been shown to be a factor for males mm -hmm. des um, desiring being attracted. All of those are a door opener. There's a saying in academia that uh, you're given your PhD, but then you have to go out and earn it. And so these are door openers. What really counts in a long-lasting relationship is ultimately behavior, attitudes, how you treat the other person. For sure. I yeah. mean, you can be instantly attracted and two <laughs> dates later, I think. <laughs> or open their mouth and you're dead. Exactly. <laughs> not my guy. Yeah, exactly. Cute, yeah. but not my guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what women find erotic, apparently, according to one of the surveys, is not naked men, not simply bec naked men. It just doesn't turn them on the same way naked women turn men on. That's right. Do you think that's true? Absolutely. Uh, men are highly uh, sensitized by sight. Uh, that's how we've evolved. Mm -hmm. uh, women um, are much more choosy in their mates and therefore um, for a woman to have sex uh, as Rosemary Besson says, they have to go through a whole cascade of thinking right. before they'll do that. Is this a potential parent for my children? Will he be a good dad? Will he provide for me? Will he be? Will I be safe with him? All those things go through a woman's mind. Sure. Whereas a man, let's just get it on. Well, they did a f uh, put a fancy machine on the women and showed them pictures of men on screen, mm -hmm. and not necessarily men on clothes, but men on screen, mm -hmm. and the, the men who were sensual. Mm -hmm. And I know that's mm -hmm. a word sometimes that's hard to define, but mm -hmm. the sensual yeah. men were the men the women were turned on to. That's right, and also women were turned on with women with women. And it wasn't so much the sex mm -hmm. or the body, it was the fact of erotica and sensuality. So an Angelina Jolie, um, for example. Well, it was uh, uh, <laughs> the women were turned on with the relationship of seeing two women together. It wasn't necessarily Angelina oh, Jolie. Okay. It was the, uh, the sensuality of two women sharing mm. rather than just a naked female body. Mm. Uh, so I was thinking if you, because if you were female and you saw An Angelina Jolie, you know she's sensual. Whether you like her or not that way, you know. Well, she's I don't a know. I've never lived with her. No, but she her, seems but like a very sensual she woman. Seems I like can't it. imagine. They have done studies, uh, measurements of women, mm -hmm. and found that they respond very close to males in terms of seeing erotic photographs and so on. Really? Yes. And, um, but something else kicks in for women in which that does not control their behavior. Mm -hmm. There's the, uh, the factor of making sure that uh, um, they get, you know. What do you think goes on when someone makes you feel sexy. I know you have to feel sexy yourself, mm -hmm. but there are certain men, you can be in their presence, and they just make you feel mm -hmm. like a woman. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the difference is between that male and another one, either they're not paying attention to you, that could right. have something to do with it, but I think you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There are men who have that gift, yep. and when you're in their presence, you feel fabulous well, about yourself. Perhaps not all women would feel that way with the same man. And oh. it has to do with what's going on in you. That there are certain symbols, certain things that are certain receptors in you that he's checking. Okay. And that makes you feel very loved, accepted, mm. affirmed, and so Deeply on. Deeply rooted beliefs, perhaps. I have a friend who's a fan of England. Mm -hmm. She lives here, but she thinks she's English, and she's not. Mm -hmm. But she's... Englishmen just turn her on. Yeah, well, what can I tell you? <laughs> there, are, there are a lot of variables in that. Uh, sometimes a foreign mm -hmm. accent, uh, sometimes a wealth and power, a uh, connection, uh, he makes a good father, he loves kids. All those things can come together. But um, I believe all of us, and certainly women, like to be affirmed. They love having male attention, and especially an attractive male. And what about men? What do men desire, do you think, in a female? If a female's interested in, in landing a man, yeah. That's the right term. Yeah. Men are really not that far different from females once the initial stages of connecting are over. Uh, they want somebody who can talk to them. They want intelligence. They want a good mother for their children. Uh, they want uh, fidelity and faithfulness is a very big factor mm -hmm. in relationships. And um, 
uh, they're not they're not drawn to wealth and power like women are, uh, or, or even necessarily connection. Uh, but uh, they're they're wanting a deep emotional connection. They're not just in it for sex. Why are are some men drawn to mean women? And by that I mean mm -hmm. women who don't treat them very well. Well, go back to the family of origin, and uh, we choose our partners for good reasons. Uh, but we also have a shadow part of ourselves that connects. And that river that runs under our relationships connects us at levels that are sometimes mm -hmm. not very healthy. You hear it all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, people say, gee, my, my dad took so much abuse from my mother. My mm -hmm. mother never said a nice word yeah. to my father. Yeah. And he loved her madly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. said he did. Yeah. Well, there, there, like I say, there, there are a lot of variables in mm -hmm. that. But, uh, you know, why does a woman go out and marry uh, addicted men, uh, mm -hmm. men who will cheat on them? And until they work that out, they're going to keep hooking up with men who will cheat on them and leave them. Familiarity uh, yeah. uh, came from a past where their father did that, their grandfather, or does it have any It could have to do with their mother as well, because in attachment theory, uh, the relationship we have with our primary caregiver, usually our mother, is what will usually determine later adult attachment styles. Right. Whether insecure, uh, anxious insecure, anxious avoidance. So a man who can't commit to a relationship or a female who can't commit to a relationship, did they have a parent, do you think? It could be who, partly that, but it also could be their journey through relationships. And maybe they've been jilted very severely and it's really raised trust factors. Mm -hmm. um, but I would want to even go deeper and say, why would you stay with a man that would do that and become so jaded and, and, and you know, um, if you had self-respect, and I'd say that in a kind way, you would say, you know, I'm not going to put up with this and you draw an end to it or you smarten up. Mm -hmm. uh, but they'll put up with it for like seven years, men and women. True. And, uh, and so I challenge that and I say, why? Why would you stay with that? Mm -hmm. And it ends up being an unhealthy need to stay in a relationship that replicates early family of origin. Of course, but lo sometimes it's fear, it's financial fear, mm -hmm. it's not wanting to upset the oh, sure. family cart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, and financial, especially a woman with children who has limited mm -hmm. finances, cer certainly that's a very big factor. Uh, it's apparently, according to uh, Rock 101 this morning, Mo on Rock 101, yeah. it's August is Infidelity Month. Wow, that's new to me. I was born in August. Well, see? Or was I born, born in unfaithful? Infidelity <laughs> no, I think w the point was it's summertime, yeah. and there's lots of beautiful tan bodies, yeah. and, uh, well, the women are at the cottage, the boys mm -hmm. are left in town sometimes. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, well, and I don't know who did the survey, but <laughs> <laughs> apparently we're this it's is infidelity <laughs> month. If you're going to fool around, you're doing it in August. Really? Well, I think some of these theories are more based on a person's personal experience than they expand it to a theory. Sure, but the rules of attraction. When you're at your sexuality conference and you're mm -hmm. discussing rules of attraction, it's got to be complicated. The human species is simply not understood you all bet. that well, and especially female sexuality. It's more complicated than male sexuality mm -hmm. uh, because there are a variety of factors a woman has to decipher to see is this going to be a good mate for me exactly and yeah. we'll keep doing that i yes. thank you i know no you have an problem. appointment yeah no problem okay nice to see you Likewise. dr david mckenzie uh, a sexual counselor and a couples counselor a sexual therapist actually tomorrow tv travel expert and columnist claire newell comes up with some new travel best bets and the co-founder of good riddance professional organizing solutions helps us pack a simple suitcase that makes traveling easy and English professor, theater critic Jerry Wasserman takes us to live theater in our town. Thanks for watching Studio 4. There will be lots more on Shaw TV, only on Shaw TV.